Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today, we ponder the continuing miracle of Easter. Remember, the Easter season is longer than Lent. Remember that Easter is not just a season. It is a way of living. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Now, the word good doesn't do justice to the Greek. The Greek kalos means the real, genuine article in the most positive sense. The Good Shepherd is the real, genuine article. Not a hired hand, not a hired gun, but the one who lays down life for you. This week we've got some exciting birthdays that get into this concept of Good Shepherd. The first is Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald suffered from debilitating stage fright. If any of you have ever gotten that, it can be something. The British actor Stephen Fry literally disappeared one time when he had stage fright. It's a fear worse than anything, but Ella Fitzgerald used her faith to steer her and to center her. She would say the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. But she would also do something else. Prepare us to table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, thou art with me. The next one is John James Audubon, birthday this week, who was born in Haiti. Audubon was noted for painting birds in the most loving and wondrous words way. Nobody has painted birds like Audubon. But Audubon also was a lover of the 23rd Psalm. He said that the birds were an expression of God's love that was the rich table that God has set before us. The rich table. The Lord is my shepherd, right? Prepare us the table before me. The Lord is the genuine article. Let's use the 23rd Psalm not as we only use it at funerals. Let's use it as they use it, as part of an everyday meditation that centers us on who is with you as you journey, who is the real deal, who will lay down life for you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in fields of green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters, and he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for thy name's sake. O yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou shalt be with me. Thy rod, thy staff, shall comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. My cup overfloweth, for surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord's forever. I left out something. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overfloweth. Anointing with oil was a way to help the sheep and the lambs live. They drool a lot, and flies and all sorts of nasty stuff would lay eggs in that drooling area. And it would literally drive the lambs insane and crazy to the point of death. The shepherd would put that oil there to keep the crazy away. Think of your baptism, how you were anointed. The Holy Gospel for this day is from the Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter, the 11th through the 18th verse. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, 
I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, beloved of Christ, the gospel of our Lord and our Savior. Monday night in our household is CBC. It's Canadian Broadcasting Network night, where we listen to our friends in Canada, to their television shows that we don't get, to their news, that views things a little differently. One of the shows that Jennifer and I have been listening to has been Miss Scarlet and the Duke. And there's a character on there, Herr Hildebrandt, who is the German funeral director and bomber in their area of London. And when Herr Hildebrandt spoke, he sounded so much like my great-grandfather Cassens. Rich, wonderful German voice that reminds me that Frederick the Great didn't get it totally right when he said that German is the language of stable boys and drill sergeants. In Harry Hildebrand's voice, I found a voice that took me back to many wondrous memories. And isn't that the way sometimes voices should work? A lot of times we can summon up the voices of the, bu the abusers, the bruisers, but sometimes, like the 23rd Psalm, we don't use the healers enough. And I think of those voices. Voices maybe we want to have. Voices that sing songs we want to sing. I think of my great-grandpa Brandon, who had that wonderful old New York City accent, where Boyd and Teutel were real animals. And I think of his relationship with Theodore Roosevelt or Franklin Roosevelt. I think of the rich voices of people like Frederick Buechner or George Plimpton that speak something totally wondrous. Frederick Buechner, great, great theologian, preacher. George Plimpton, the wondrous storyteller. I think of the great voices like James Earl Jones or Gregory Peck. I think of Miss Etta James singing at last or or Patti LaVelle, or Miss Sarah Vaughan, the great and legendary Lena Horne. We'll get back to her someday. I think of Leo Wilkie, Ojibwe, giant of faith. In his voice you could hear the wind going across the prairie, the buffalo long before the ox carts came up from Grand Forks, or the voyageur from Winnipeg. I think of Mel Ristvit. Mel, alone, way up in years, caring for his wife with Alzheimer's dementia. With that wondrous Norwegian accent telling me about what the will of God is. We're stitched together by voices, by grace, by stories. I think of the great storytellers, one of my favorites, it's Philip Alcott Stern. We'll get to him. But, but when I need a good voice and when I need a good storyteller, I go to Orson Welles. That's the one that our Orson is named after. And we'll get into how he got his name another time. But Orson Welles told a story about a celebration that was taking place at the Mayflower Hotel. FDR had been reelected for the fourth time. And there were a lot of people at this dais, the rich, the famous at the Mayflower Hotel. I can remember as a kid watching J. Edgar Hoover eat a meal behind curtains. I can, Wells was there and Harry Truman 
was playing the piano. Now, Wells and Churchill differ over President Truman's piano skill. To me, any person that can play the piano, I, I take my hat off of. But on the stage was George C. Marshall, probably one of the great unknown Americans who has done more for this country and the world that's still taking place. Marshall was the chief of the staff. Marshall had to keep Patton from killing Montgomery, Montgomery from killing Eisenhower, MacArthur and King from killing each other. It goes on and on. He took the door of his office off so that he and Henry Stimson, another great American, could plan not only the world, but the new world. He had to manage Churchill and FDR. But the, Wells noticed that something caught Marshall's mind and vision. It was a young soldier who stuck his head in. And as Wells said, it was much more interesting than Truman or any of the other people, so he, he watched. And Marshall got down off the dais, went through the crowd, went up to that young soldier, brought him to a table, and sat down. And there, the man who planned not only the end of the Axis, but the beginning of the New World, you know, the Marshall Plan, the GI Plan, that was all him, sat down with a young private who was so young, he didn't even have a stripe. Wells was mesmerized. Marshall sat down, gave the young man something to eat, and talked with him. This man, with all this stuff on his plate, sat down and talked to him. And if Wells would have been more than a lapsed Episcopalian, maybe he'd have seen the 23rd Psalm right there. Here he is, the head of so much, setting in motion the millions of people. He was, as Wells said, and this is the this is the key. He was the genuine article. Wells said he was crying as the way Marshall took care of that young man. Think about that. Marshall had lost his son. Marshall had lost so much, but he was the real deal. A soldier's soldier. He was the genuine article. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yeah. Working with a, folks in AA on their steps, I learned one thing, that what people ultimately wanted was someone to love them, someone to forgive them, someone to be there. That's the genuine article. That when you have made a dog's breakfast of life, when death seems constant, there is someone there wanting every day to restore your soul. That's why you need this piece of scripture, not just once, but every day, every night, to give your day shape, to give your day Sabbath. That's the genuine article. Ella Fitzgerald used to say whenever she got up to sing, she felt in the valley, she would say this psalm over and over again. We have a God that's not just for sunshine, not just for happy times, not just for positives, but a God who is willing to go the distance and beyond as shepherd. 
when you have more than a nervy, when the existential willies are the least of your problems. This shepherd takes seriously the randomness, the horror, the gut-rending stuff. And he goes there armed to the teeth. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. These are not weapons of offense. These are defensive weapons. These are the weapons that he takes to lie down in that place that separates you from the ravenous beast and rural psychopaths. What's more than that, God will walk through you, through the deepest shadows. God is not merely a God of sunny climes. God is a God of the storm-tossed north face of life. So that when the darkness comes over, the genuine article leads you to light and peace. The genuine article takes you to a promised land. Say it, claim it, name it as often as you can, and it will become constant. You will know. The prophets spent a lot of time identifying good shepherds and bad shepherds. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Zechariah, Hosea. They didn't just say what the shepherd is not. They said what the shepherd is. Think about this, Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you are in the midst of my life. You have called me as your own, and I know you will never forsake me, O Lord my God. When you are scared, when you have stumbled into a place that you really have no business being in, the genuine article climbs off the dais and makes a place for you. Well said he would have loved to have known the passage in Scripture and the prayer book that Marshall underlined for that young man. Say it, claim it, shout it, sing it. Remember the words of Isaiah. Do not be afraid, for I know you by name, and you are mine. And as you pass through the deep waters, I will be with you. And through the troubles, but they will not get the best of you, for I am the Lord your God. I am the Holy One of Israel. What is Pharaoh compared to you or the Sudan or the Sheba? They are nothing compared to you. For you alone do I love. And you alone do I honor. In the morning's hush, in noon's rush, in the shadowing of the day, the genuine article is with you. Do not be afraid, for I know you by name and you are mine. And as Isaiah said, as a goldsmith beholds its, great, its greatest creation, as a shepherd carries a lamb, so I will carry you. The king of love your shepherd is. Remember that hymn. Sing it. Find it. It's great stuff. And let God in these words Easter in your life now and evermore, and when you will, you will have the peace of God which leads you to green pastures. You will have the peace of God that restoreth your soul. May this happen for you now and evermore. The people of God say, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O shepherding Lord, Easter in us, Come in the darkness where fierce eyes lay upon us, where branches snap and others run away. Come, come, restore our souls. Plant yourself in the midst of whatever hells we are in. Name us, claim us. Remind us that you are the genuine article. God who goes to the grave, to the cross, to hell and back because you know us by name. You, you steep down, step down 
from the dais of heaven to claim us, to forgive us, to love us, to move us to leave those things which are killing us, to take the things that are of this kingdom and claim us for life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, for all who suffer, for all who look for rays of hope and sunshine, for those of us who look at the darkness, stitch the golden thread of your Easter love and your Easter justice and your Easter healing and your Easter promise. Gather us, O great shepherd, into your loving arms, into your warm embrace. Speak words of grace to those places that shiver and topple. Remind us who you are and whose we are. We lift up to you those in hospital. We give our beloved sister, Pat. Be with her and Fritz and Gail and all the loved ones. Heal her. Heal her and little Georgia. Let your healing power flow through every cell and fiber of their bodies. Be with those of our prayer list whom we name in our hearts, but especially we lift up to you, Pat and Rick. We lift up to you, Judy and Dan. We lift up to you all that serve this country at home and abroad, our National Guardsmen who go to the nursing homes, who go to the prisons, all those in law enforcement, all those who wait for justice, all those who are scared and lonely, who are depressed, who are downtrodden, we lift up to you, again, those that we name in our heart, we ask you to do Genesis, to do Easter there, we ask you to be with those who help who are your shepherds, who as genuine articles again and again and again go to do healing in the hospitals. Be with the people of Hurley, McLaren, Genesis Ascension, Henry Ford, and Beaumont Healthcare Systems. Be with those who are nurses, those who are servants, those who work in the labs, those who work in the doctor's office, those who drive the ambulance, those who are emergency workers. Be with Gail, be with Connie, be with Emily, be with Brett, be with Ed, be with Amber and all. Be with those who stock the shelves, be with those who deliver the mail, be with those who check up on their neighbors. Be with those who do all those tasks we take for granted. Be with those who need Eastering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For these things and so much more, we open our hearts and our minds in silence. Great Shepherd, Feed your sheep. Great Shepherd, love your sheep. Great Shepherd, carry your sheep. Great Shepherd, let those in the valley hear your voice, the voice that taught us to pray with boldness and confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May our God come to the vast untidiness, the vast pains, the vast hopes, the vast dreams of your lives, and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ has risen, and so will you. Amen.